I want to go see a lot of tarpon, Bahia Han is a spot. And, and that day, it did not disappoint. This is awesome, man. Can you believe how many are rolling here? There's a ton of fish. You know, I've seen them really good at Bahia Honda, but the nice thing here, there were so many fish in one zone. So many fish continuing to roll. Come on. Oh, my gosh. He rolled right on my balloon. I thought the balloon went down. Yawn. Come on. Nice job, Tom. Get him. Oh, look at him jumping. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. The forecast for the Straits of Florida from the west end of the Seven Mile Bridge to south of Half Moon Shoal. Out 20 nautical miles. For today, Sunday, April 23rd. Winds 5 to 10 knots from the east in the morning. Increasing to 15 to 20 knots in the afternoon. Seas, one to three feet. For tonight, northeast to east winds increasing to 20 to 25 knots. With occasional gusts to 30 knots. Seas, five to 10 feet. Isolated showers. Monday. Northeast winds 10 to 15 knots. Becoming east in the afternoon. And increasing to near 20 knots. Seas 3 to 5 feet. Increasing to 5 to 7 feet. Isolated showers. weather lately has been so windy and so rough. It is unbelievably nice to be out here on a day when it drops off. It is perfect, man. Uh, we have, I haven't been down here on a calm day in a long time. I remember years ago when I used to come down here and it was calm, man, you'd see a lot of tarpon roll. Well, there's going to be a lot of tarpon in here. I like this place. I've always liked this place. You can come out here in a John boat. You can come out here in a yellowfin. A little something for everybody. Some big creatures live over there. Bahia Honda is one of those places, these tarpon magnets. You've got Key West Harbor, you've got Bahia Honda, you've got Government Cut here in Miami, and then Boca Grand Channel. And there's probably others that I've never been to, but I've been to all of those. And they're just some kind of a place for whatever reason, that is a tarpon magnet where there are massive numbers of fish that will come to those destinations and stay there. And those guys down there at Bahia Honda have got it wired. They, they really have a great fishery. We've always tended to go there on very, very rough days because it's too rough to fish here, or too rough to fish somewhere else. And that has just enough lead to break, break the wind and we can get there and you can, you can fish for a lot of fish. I've always kind of saved that as kind of a rough weather right. spot, right? And this was one of the first times that we've gone there on some nicer weather. And uh, man, they showed us how many fish were there. It was incredible. Pretty much slack, huh? Yeah, it's just starting to go out. It's already starting to creep out. Yeah. Timing should be good. It was a good plan. You know, we had all kinds of options, and that's something that, uh, you know, it's easy. 
all you need really is just just a bunch of crabs. Yeah. Don't have to worry about throwing the net. Don't have to worry about you know catching all this bait or buying it. Um, it's real simple. Every, almost every marina in town's got going to have some crabs this time of year. You got to get there early, quarter to silver dollar size. You know crab. That's all it takes, and uh, and you're in business. So it's easy fishing. So we're right at the beginning of this outgoing tide. Once it starts moving out, these guys ought to feed a little bit. I hope so. If they're as happy that the wind quit blowing as we are, <laughs> it's gonna be the best day ever. I'll tell you what, it's an incredible fishery. Um, every time I've been down there, you know, it's a sure thing as far as getting a few bites and seeing a lot of fish. And, you know, by having that many fish in one area, you know, and being persistent, just keep continuing that drift, continuing to keep that crab in their face, eventually we got some bites. Bite! He's on! You got him? Get a jump. Ah, in the bridge. Gone. Okay, well, starting to bite. They're really starting to roll down tide now. It'll be a point in the tide where they really start biting. Jumping, nice. Oh, oh hammer, hammer. right after him. Dang. Look at that giant hammer. Oh my gosh. Get the rod ready. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K Resort, the only key you'll need. By Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here by Lawrence. Find, navigate, dominate with Lawrence. And by Freybill, Buff, St. Croix Rods, and Florida Keys and Key West. You know, we can go here at Long Key, it's incredible um, fishing. You know, Channel 2, Channel 5, I think, you know, all good. There's tarpon everywhere, all your channels down in Key West. But if I want to go see a lot of tarpon, Bahia Han is a spot. And, and that day, it did not disappoint. We pulled up there to the bridge, um, you know, immediately saw our buddy Chris Johnson um, over there. He was hooked up with one. Um, you know, we, could, we didn't see a lot of fish rolling when we first got there. We set the anchor just at the slack tide, but just the beginning of that outgoing tide, just starting to, um, you know, switch and, and trickle out. As soon as the tide started rolling, we started seeing the tarpon roll. Just a solid drift through them. Look at them all, man. Look at that right here at the boat. No shortage of fish. Jeez. <laughs> That's right up there with as many as I've ever seen in Key West Harbor or Boca Grand Channel or anywhere. Oh my gosh, look at that, rolling right on our balloons. I thought we were gonna snag one, I really did. I didn't see how we could float our rig through that many fish and, and not just floss one or, or just get it to, to where it even bumps the balloon, you know, where one might swim into the line. I mean, there were so many fish so many there, fish. but it wasn't happening. You know, the first thing I'm gonna do when the fishing gets tough is, okay, let's have less tackle in the water. So instead of three split shots, I go to one split shot, 60 pound leader to a 40 pound leader, six aught hook to a four aught hook, and I go from a, a crab like this to a crab like this. You know, I don't know if that's what it is, but eventually that balloon is going to down through there. And what you're looking for is just like nymph fishing in a river. The the current's going at a certain speed and that, that balloon will just, just take a little take a little detour. It's supposed to float just down through there like that. And I'm watching it, it goes into one of those shadows and it just kind of jerks over to one side. Man, I just reeled down and sure enough, that was him. I knew it was gonna be him. That's him. Finally, I went down on that leader, I went down on that hook. We got this line out. I'm not gonna pull on him until we get past this bridge. 
that was awesome, man. You hook that fish and then it's off to the races. We gotta, you know, act quickly or that fish is gonna get around the bridge and break us off. So we've gotta let the anchor go, drop their anchor with a float buoy, turn around, start chasing that guy. And luckily he makes it, he makes a kind of an easy move for us to get through the bridge and we're in the clear. You're fighting them, we're out there in the clear, it's looking good. You, you got him, you know, because yep. the hard part is getting away from the bridge. Once you get away from the bridge, you're feeling like you're in the clear. Nice job, dude. I went down on the leader, down on the hook, finally saw that balloon move. Oh, look at him shake that head. Be right here. Right on the surface, not, not very deep. Finally, man, we had to work hard for that one. Thought he had me in the bridge, and then I finally did see him. He wants to go up there by those guys. Sometimes the hard thing is getting them away from the bridge. This time, the hard thing was uh, was beating beating the tax man. A lot of people refer to the sharks as the tax man because he's coming. There's not a lot you can do about it, and he's coming. He's and eventually, take his cut. he's gonna he's gonna take his cut. There he goes. That's it. Tire yourself oh, out. Oh, him jumping! Nice. Oh, oh hammer, hammer. right after him. Dang, Dang giant hammer. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Get the rod ready. Great hammerhead is the tarpon's nemesis. While other sharks will eat the tarpon, none seem to be as common as the hammerhead is this time of the year in those tarpon magnet kind of spots. Just, they feel it and they're on them. Come on, buddy. Dadgummit. Oh, now I got the hammerhead. Do you really? Yep. Or the tarpon, I don't know. If we get up there, maybe I might be able to salvage this. Let me go towards him. Yeah. Just don't go freaking out, just nice and easy. When I looked over there, I saw that tarpon jumping straight out of the air, and I saw a dorsal fin that was as high as the tarpon. I mean, that was a massive shark. And I saw his head come out of the water, his dorsal fin, and that tarpon jumping. I mean, it was an incredible scene. Uh, you know, you didn't know if you had the tarpon on, the shark on, you don't even know, well, it was just you know, craziness. Might be able to catch that hammerhead right now. I could certainly feel the tarpon jumping and then the hammerhead hitting the tarpon and then all of a sudden, you know, slack. And then I've got the tarpon again and you can feel, you know, the head shakes and normal tarpon fight. And then, you know, I'm watching that shark wheel around and then my fish goes this way. And I'm thinking, I think I got the, the hammerhead, but it wasn't the hammerhead, it was the tarpon. And he was hauling butt down that way and all of a sudden the, the leader parted and uh, I believe that one got away. Wow, that's crazy, huh? I only lost a foot or so of the leader. Maybe the tarpon got away. You know, you hook that fish while the while that shark is right there in the vicinity, and and it's no different than the, you know when we're out here actually trying to catch the sharks or trying to catch any of these fish, Jack Cravel or whatever, and you get them kind of chummed up and kind of excited, and then you throw a pilchard in the water, and it is just just on. I heard you say that maybe they're not biting because of the sharks. Yep. Maybe we need to uh, catch the shark. Those guys got a good show right there in front of them. Yeah. Tarpon jumping and then all of a sudden the hammerhead on him immediately. Immediately he's right. Honda is one of those places, man, that just, it's a cool place for seeing just huge numbers of fish. And, you know, we, we get there kind of second guessing ourselves at first. Are there any fish here? Are we in a good spot? Whatever. Then as the tide changes, starts to go out, which is traditionally what the tide that, that you say that you really like there. I've had good experience on that tide too. We fish that entire tide with fish rolling hundreds and hundreds of fish rolling all around us. We're looking down the bridge and they are rolling here and here and here. Guys are throwing lures to them, they're drifting stuff through them, but we see fish rolling all over the place. This is awesome, man. Can you believe how many are rolling here? There's a ton of fish everywhere. I'm looking at them every, every which way. I'm gonna try a little shallower. Definitely went through them right then. No I mean, think, think about how many fish must be there. If we're seeing these ro this many roll, how many are we not seeing? Quite a few. Some massively big fish, too. Now, 
it's interesting to me what, what made them all of a sudden decide they wanted to roll. We, when we got here, we hadn't seen any. I don't know, but all of a sudden they all wanted to do it at once. All the way up and down the bridge. In front of us, beside us, behind us. A lot of fish around. I mean, just 20 fish rolling that at a time. That is by far the most tarpon that I've seen in one place in my entire life. I mean, you know, I've seen them really good at Bahia Honda, but the nice thing here, that, it, that there were so many fish in one zone. So many fish continuing to roll. And while they were rolling, I'm looking on the bottom machine, and they were all under us too. Yeah, well, that was kind of what I was noticing, is I, was, I went and stood on the bow. And, you know, the traditional way to fish is kind of get your stern just a little bit uh, north of, of that shadow line. And there's a line of boats all the way down there. Everybody's kind of doing the same thing. But I'm, I get up on the bow and I'm looking down there. And I'm like, Rich, man, all the fish are right here. Yeah. And they're holding in a spot. I'm, I'm sitting there watching. You know, it's happening. And then it's happening again all in the same spot. And I'm looking down and there's a line all the way down there. And it seems like where the fish normally should have been. Now they're up here today for whatever reason. So we pull up and anchor up here and we are able to get our balloons to go down through these fish over and over again. And you know what, even if they are moving up and down, it made me feel a lot better that, 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 that fish that, are rolling just, all around just our the, baits. Just the visual right there of all those fish just consistently coming up. I mean, they weren't just rolling, they were, they were jumping out of the water, splashing, I mean, it was violent. You can see them just kicking that tail super hard, going right back down to the bottom. And there were so many just one after the other. I mean, when we got set up in front of them, it was just exciting. Even though we weren't getting bit every drift, it was just like, wow, come on. Oh my gosh, he rolled right on my balloon. I thought the balloon went down. He rolled right on top of it. Right at the end of that outgoing tide, that, that bite had turned on a little bit. Our, our, our balloons were floating a little slower. Our crabs were staying in the strike zone a little bit longer, and, um, and it didn't take long. My balloon went down and disappeared just like you. I was like, whoa, where is it? Gotta go, go quick, he's going in the bridge. We got went to the going. bridge, come on. And I started reeling, I'm tight on him, he comes up and he, you throw the anchor, we go back after him. And this time, it was interesting because I thought for sure he'd gone through the bridges. He jumped halfway between a span, but luckily, he, instead of going, continuing to go that way, he'd gone back through the same span we were in. Good. We got him in the clear, you know, just awesome fish. I mean, running, jumping, and then, you know, I was trying to fight him as quick as I could, knowing the sharks were there. I didn't want to have him get, get, get to be shark bait, so I was really trying to get maximum pressure on him. Coming up. Got him away from the bridge. Just hope the sharks are, are uh, chilled sharks up are now. Here. Coming up. The leader. Caught fish. Here he is, right under the boot. Come on, come on, come on. We're not trying to feed tarpon to sharks, so you definitely want the fight to go as quickly as possible. For you and I, I mean, the most exciting part is definitely not handling them at the boat. Um, that's something that we kind of have to do sometimes. The most exciting part is getting the bite, setting the hook, seeing the first couple of jumps, and you know, whatever happens after that, I'm, I'm fine with, Those, honestly. The first 30 seconds when they come jump, and that's the part that, 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 I, that I get up in the morning for. Oh, just got off. Man. Well, that's okay. Got the leader. Yep. Caught fish. You just pulled the hook, huh? Yeah, just pulled the hook after all that. Huh. All right, well, let's get back there and catch another one. It looks like they're biting now. Yeah. Finally. Woo! It's about time. That was cool. K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Yeti, built for the wild. Mercury Marine, go boldly. Motor Guide, accuracy matters. And by Costa, Power Pull, Ameritrail, Hook, and B&W Trailer Hitches. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the show. You know, we'd like to get to know you better, carry on the conversation, and the best way to do that is follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.
you're in all about the afternoon. And you're thinking, man, maybe, thanks, Wilner. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, you're thinking, man, we're probably going to get another one of those 10 minute little windows as, uh, as the sun starts to hit the water. And then if we stay out there all night, then we'll have, I'll have my turn to have confident time of the day and, and we'll fish first thing in the morning. But I know that we're going we're gonna to stay out there till sunset. Well, we, we'll, knew, we knew we were in the fish. It's just a matter of if they're going to bite. And knowing that when that sun gets low, they're going to feed. I mean, those, that many fish are going to eat. I kind of wait until that last hour as that sun's hitting the water. Sure enough, it didn't take long. Um, we saw a few roll, moved over in front of them. Your first drift in there, you got bit. Yawn. Come on. Nice job, Tom. Nice. Come on. Get him. Oh, look at him jumping. Still got him? He's off. That's it. He's off. He just threw the hook. Nice. Boy, they were just rolling right there, all over the place. You know, to hear those gill plates rattle and see that fish jump in that low light is just seriously one of the one of the coolest things about tarpon fishing. And that day was was just cool because you know we both appreciate the tarpon very much. They're a, it's a part of our livelihood. It's a part of most of these guys' livelihoods down here in some way, shape, or form. And and even if you don't catch a ton, you know, to, to have that appreciation of the fish and then to be able to go out there and see them, it's really cool. And that's what we, that's what we had that day, you know, you know, in Bahia Honda. We're seeing all of these different fish and all of these different situations. We're seeing the predators. We're seeing the interaction between the fishermen and the fish and the fish and the predator. And it's just a, just a cool situation and a cool place. And, uh, you know, that's why you, that's why you come to the Florida Keys right there.